Let's take some time now for the Lord, for prayer, for our hearts, and for the time that we get to spend together with God's Word that brings us together as God's people. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we seek your grace, especially as we approach your Word. We need it in order to have the right understanding and to have the right spirit to receive that understanding. Lord, these are but pages and words. The full understanding is of you. It is from you. It is how you dwell in us so powerfully, so palliatively that we can share you with one another. And Lord, we pray this day that we'll be given words that will strengthen us in our ability to, to speak truth into the world and to do it to glorify you and not ourselves. Lord, we pray for those who lead and guide us, that they will learn this way of wisdom that comes from your word, that they will not be caught up in their own glory and in their own satisfaction, especially in these trying times when it takes a real leader to be humble and to serve, to see to the, be the well-being of all people, and not to, to set an agenda and to think so much into the future of, of, of one idea, but to embrace the people that we've been given. Lord, we pray for families, for households, and those who lead within them and around them. Lord, we pray for communities that are struggling. Lord, we pray for all the, the people of the world who are in a new way and in renewing ways, finding ways to draw close to you. Lord, we pray that you will bless us as your church gathered around your word this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. And this is a reflection found in the book of Job. Job chapter 12 at verse 24. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. As a leader in a church community, I like to think that I often have the right answers. But the reality is I don't. And if you look at the leaders in and through our world and in politics and in just in just your own community or maybe even in your own household, sometimes those leaders are taken away and lost. They become lost and they need to be shown the way, reminded of the way to go. It is not up to everyone, to a certain one, to lead all the time, unless you're Christ. So as you come to meet these people and, and encounter them in, in your own way, in your own way that you serve with them, even if it's the great Canadian thing of writing letters, or perhaps it is standing in protest or in solidarity. Show your leaders that you are there to help them keep from getting lost so that they can guide all people well. God has given them their office. And sometimes that's hard to understand when we don't agree with a leader or with an agenda that they're setting. God has a purpose in them being where they are. Maybe it's to call you to task to take responsibility for more things in your community or in your family. Maybe it is for you to uplift and to build them and to learn how to do that, to teach them how to be a good leader. And if you have been a leader, I think you understand this. What a wonderful thing it is to have people that you are serving to come alongside you and want to work with you. And, and to, to be an encouragement to you and a blessing and to the leadership that you would offer wherever you're taking them. Well, where's the Lord taking me today? I hope to greater answers. I hope you share that journey with me. As we look for the truth, as we seek for it in God's word, as we celebrate it with one another. God bless you and keep you safe on the journey.